Good day, everyone. Hi. Thank you very much for joining today's uh, webinar and also your interest in field code. My name is Verena and I work as a software trainer and consultant here at Fieldcode. And I have the pleasure to be your host for today's webinar, where we will present to you the great potential of automation and how it can transform your field service operation. But don't worry, the webinar will not only be theoretical, you will also be able to learn and see automation live in our field service management solution. All right, so yeah, let's get started. Your field service operation is uh, not a static network. Through proactive field service management, you can actually boost the customer experience and overachieve your KPIs. The smartest way of doing so is through automation. So let's have a look at a generic field service management process. First is the creation of the actual ticket. Get all the information around the affected asset, the customer location, the issue and the job to be performed on site. This can take up to five minutes. Second is to assign the ticket to the correct queue. You might have a complex field service management network with different teams and different responsibilities. First is to pre-select which team is affected and then secondly they need to actually dispatch the ticket to a dedicated engineer. And this is normally a very complex process as you need to consider the due date of the ticket, the appointment window, um, the spare parts needed for delivery, and of course then also you need to know your resource qualifications as well as the availabilities of your stuff. And after all the decisions it also would make sense to optimize as well your routes. Then, of course, yeah, also the customer wants to be informed because, yeah, a happy customer is always an informed customer. So the appointment needs to be confirmed, the engineer name needs to be provided, etc. And then finally now our engineer goes on site to perform the job. This job, um, yeah, this needs to be documented and reported. So as well, engineer needs to confirm what spare parts have been used, was the issue resolved. The customer then needs to sign this worksheet. And yeah, now in total, this ha has been adding up to 28 minutes. And this does not include the actual productive working time of the engineer. This is only the administrative time needed to make this job actually happen. Yeah, and spoiler alert, you can automate 85% of these administrative repetitive tasks through automation. So first, you don't need a human to create a ticket. The ticket can be created automatically through an API to your ERP system, to your ITSM system, or as well an IoT sensor you have on your asset or your assets. The job will then be assigned automatically to the correct queue. And through Fecode's great optimizer function, the job can be assigned fully automated to the best available and best skilled engineer. Then through the customer information sense, uh, center, we will keep the customer informed at all times. And unfortunately, this is a step where we need manual interaction because we still need the engineer to report the form, insert the information, but through 
the multi-layer forms and a guided workflow, the engineer will be supported greatly by Freecode software. So with the great automation functions of Freecode, we were able to automize the process and just have administrative work of four minutes in comparison to 24 minutes. This adds up. So let's have a look um, on the less process driven but a more commercial view. We have an example customer where, yeah, here, which, which is an IT service provider. The IT service provider does have 100 users, which are mainly um, the field service technicians. They handle 1,400 tickets a month. With our fully automated dispatching process, they were able to reduce the dispatching team by three hats, which meant 120k savings a year. Through the improved route planning and efficiency gains, through the automated dispatching, um, also three resources less were needed to perform the on-site jobs. Um, this also added up uh, indirectly to the savings in the fleet costs, less cars were needed, and of course fuel costs through the efficiency gains in the route planning. And the cherry on top with fuel code is, um, fuel code will compensate the CO2 produced by the field service operation. We calculate the CO2 um, exposed to the atmosphere based on the mileage and compensate them through our in-house projects. Reforestation in Zimbabwe as well as enhanced weathering in Greece. Okay, in the following slides I will now walk you through the automation potentials mentioned in greater detail. So first is the ticket creation. As mentioned, you can connect FICO very easily to your service networks um, Yeah, through our API connector. For example, you have an ARP system where you track your assets and when the yearly maintenance cycle is due, um, your EAP system will trigger the ticket creation in fit code so you can plan that maintenance ticket. But also you can connect your IoT assets to your field service network so you have your assets equipped with IoT sensors and once a specific threshold is reached then this sensor will create a ticket automatically by field code. All right, next on the list is the ticket assignment and field code is really built for environments with a very complex service structure. Not only one project or a customer, several projects, several customers with completely different processes and requirements but also different teams and different locations, some are permanent resources, some are subcontractors. So based on that automated ticket assignment, you can decide how these tickets are distributed based on several parameters. For example, the location, so what zip does the ticket has, as well as the project name. So Chicago area and project A goes to team one. Um, customer B plus due date is tomorrow goes to the subcontractor. This can be configured very flexibly um, with field code so you don't need to worry which team is concerned for your ticket. Then let's have a look at the automated dispatching. Of course, as mentioned in this dispatching process, a lot of decisions are done normally by human. Which ticket has the highest priority? Um, do I want my engineers to actually perform over hours? Is it very important um, to me to have a high SLA compliance or is it more important to me to have the most efficient route? Um, do I want fixed lunch breaks for my technicians or is it okay that they just 
yeah, have a window where it's actually most efficient. These decisions you actually can configure in your system so our optimizer knows what decisions he needs to do. Then let's have a look in the root optimization in a greater detail. We have an example here of a route with several tickets um, which are performed by three engineers, which is the first engineer is Ben, a permanent resource, which is has a yeah, uh, estimated driving time of two hours and 38 miles. The next permanent resource is Cho and he's driving almost two hours and 22 miles. And then Matt having also almost two hours and 48 miles. With the root optimization example here, we were able to actually reduce and make the route more efficient. We have Ben actually having 20 minutes less driving time through the automized route. We have Cho also 20 min minutes of saving of the driving time with this improved route. And the subcontractor resource was no longer actually needed to perform the amount of jobs through the automation. So we have in total saved 40 miles in one complete resource for this one day through the efficiency gains through the root planning. Okay, then let's have a look at the root efficiency in another level because actually you can save time with fee codes traffic protection. With these three tickets here, if you just change the order on how and when you drive to them, you can actually save these 30 minutes of driving time um, just by considering the traffic jams and the traffic on specific dates and on a specific time. Then to the customer communication. As I mentioned, um, customers actually prefer having a predefined appointment rather than receiving their service asset ASAP. So keep your customers informed and this is very easy with the customer information center because it will keep the customer informed automatically. The customer will get an SMS or an email once his appointment is confirmed and in that SMS there will be a tracking link where he can always have a look at the latest status of his ticket and he will be also able to track where is his engineer and he will be able to see the estimated time of arrival and will also automatically be informed when the engineer is for example in a traffic jam and will be delayed. Then the last step on the list is the ticket reporting. So the FMA, the field code mobile app, will support the engineer with the smart automation because our workflow will guide the engineer and it will lead the engineer through the process. Each event has a specific requirement and a process embedded. So you can embed different processes for different pro projects and different requirements, but the engineer won't even notice because he's anyway just clicking the next step. Also important information like this example here that is a production site and he needs to bring his helmet is always highlighted. And yeah, this reporting is really intuitive and easy and it will also only ask the information which is actually needed for the specific project and for the specific site or country. All right, enough on slide. Um, let's have a look in our system life. Okay, so I have opened here our cloud-based field service management solution. And here you can see the field workplace 
which is for receiving, assigning, dispatching, and optimizing the jobs to be performed, as well as monitoring and managing those um, tickets from beginning to closer. But the thing is with automation, you cannot really see automation as it's happening in the background and nothing really flashy happens. So in this presentation, I would actually love to show you the configurations made in the background so you can also feel how easy and fast these country configurations can be done. And I would like to follow the process presented, which is ticket creation, ticket assignment, dispatching, customer configuration, and then the reporting. So let's start with the ticket creation. When a ticket is being cre created, you can actually set the duration, the skills, and the ticket scoring automatically. In my example here, very easy, I have two different assumed durations for ticket based on their ticket category. For installations, I assumed a duration of two hours, and for a break and fix, I assumed a duration of one hour. Further, the skills needed, the qualifications needed to perform the actual uh, job can also be set automatically. For example, my English skill here will be assigned automatically to um, tickets which are for the United States of America. These skills can then also be assigned to users, so later on in the dispatching process, these two can be matched. Then the ticket scoring. Our optimizer will need to know what is the most important ticket. In my case, the most important ticket will be tickets for my company called Heinz. And if the device type is a server, then this ticket will have priority over the device type workplace. Great. Then to the ticket assignment, the most important tool is the groups. So for my presentation here, I have one group, which is Chicago Workplace, which is done by permanent resources, whether the print Chicago is done by subcontractors. And uh, for my Chicago tickets, I have defined an area when tickets with a specific zip or address arrive here in my marked area, this will come to my specific dispatch group automatically, only if they are also for the project workplace support. For this project, I have assigned four engineers and also for this workplace support group, I have not activated the fully automated dispatching as I would love to also show you what is happening in the background. Nevertheless, for my print um, queue, I have activated the fully automated dispatching as well as the just-in-time publishing. So whenever there is a new ticket for this group, this ticket will be um, automatically assigned and dispatched and optimized um, to the engineer as well as immediately sent to the engineer's mobile app. Great! Next is the information center and also the automated information sent out to the users. I have configured these in my automated actions. And here I actually have two automated actions. One is once the appointment is confirmed, an email will be sent out automatically to the user to inform about the appointment and the engineer name, as well as the user will receive an automatic email to the end user which with a link which allows the user to track the pro progress of the ticket. I will show you how this live tracker will look like. In this case, the user is informed that the ticket is received, scheduled and the appointment is confirmed. And once the engineer starts driving to the respective location, the user will be able to track the engineer live until arrival. Isn't that great? So these were all my configurations made in order to support this process automatically as I shown to you. 
So this is my workplace now. For my printing queue, I actually don't need to do anything because the fully automated dispatching is activated. So I want to show you the manual process so you are able to understand what is done automatically. For this day, I have 12 tickets. Some of the tickets are already in queue for the engineer to perform. And I can assign new incoming tickets to my team just by dragging and dropping here. And you can see that the timeline is actually responding. One engineer is not skilled enough to perform this ticket. One engineer has an absence today. So I can actually just drop the ticket then to another person. So it, it which is a fit for this delivery. I can also have another way of dispatching the ticket, which is via our scheduling assistant, which will then also show the best available, the best skill technician and validates as well which qualifications are needed, what is the due date of the ticket and what is um, the, the, the route and what is the address of the, of the location. So I've just refreshed my browser here um, in order to show you the um, semi-automated dispatching. And for this, I will use our optimizer function, but I will just start it actually manually for tomorrow. And I have my 12 tickets here. And what will our optimizer do is check what is the most important tickets, of course, based on our scoring, what is the duration of the ticket, what is the due date, when it needs to be performed, and then we'll check what available resources do I have, what is their availability, what is their skill set, and then of course the most important bit is to optimize, uh, optimize um, the routes and to make the assignment as efficient as possible. And you can see here that the number of the overall planned kilometers actually reduces just by this optimizing process. And you can see as well um, that the assignment is still in pro progress and just the optimization continues. And as soon as I have my optimized result here, um, I can simply click take over and this planning then will be assigned to the respective day. You can see here that my list of tickets is getting smaller and that these uh, tickets got assigned to my respective queue and to the respective engineer. And you can also see here that actually some of the stuff has not been taken into consideration. And this is based on my configuration that I want to maximize the resource utilization here. And great, with this, my ticket assignment is actually done. The tickets are dispatched. And this was based on our semi-automated dispatching function. Okay, great. All right. So I hope that this little live presentation gave you a good glimpse on how easy it actually is to implement the automation potential presented in field code and save those 85% of manual tasks in order to concentrate on the tasks which actually add value to your process. Yeah, in, in case you have any questions to this webinar, feel very free to contact me. You can find my contact details on the slide or now on the yeah left side as a link to this webinar. And uh, yeah, also if you would like to get in touch with our consultants, you can very easily book an appointment via our website. 
just choose one of the appointment slots which suit the best and get in touch with us. We would love to speak to you. All right, so now it's the time to, to say goodbye and to say thank you. We very much appreciate your time today and we wish you a wonderful day. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, goodbye.